So now that we've kind of introduced virulence factors and toxins, let's talk a little bit about it. The first one is endotoxin, which we've already introduced in the structure part of the discussion a couple minutes ago. So endotoxin is basically a molecule on the outside of the external cell membrane of the gram-negative bacteria. Basically what it is is it's lipopolysaccharide. It's just this big molecule of fat and starch effectively. And our immune system has co-evolved with these bugs, so it's able to recognize it and mount a response to it. A um, couple things to note, it's heat stable, which means if you boiled it, you could still get sick from it. It wouldn't kill it. And not only are we talking about gram negatives that have this thing, but also listeria, which is a gram positive rod, listeria monocytogenes. It also is the only gram positive that has LPS. So that's good to know because that's definitely going to be testable on step one. So why do we care? Well, the truth is that our immune system has evolved to be very, very good at picking up on certain types of molecules and mounting response to it. And you know that we have B cells and T cells, which are very specific for what they do and don't respond to. But the thing is that a lot of our cells can respond to lipopolysaccharides. So let's say we've got tons and tons of gram-negative bugs that are flowing through our bloodstream. That's something that we call bacteremia, right? Well, if all of our white cells start to encounter the LPS and they all start to release their cytokines, their interleukins and interferons, then there's going to be a massive, massive response. And let's just try to understand what happens. If we have an infection in our finger, let's say it is a splinter, first thing that happens is that the different cells in the finger recognize the infection. They call in the recruits through the lymph, which basically means that they have to make their blood vessels leaky in the finger so that all the white cells, the neutrophils, and the B cells and T cells can leak out of the vasculature into the tissue. Well, if you have a systemic response where there's something similar happening, then and, and these chemicals are being flushed through the entire cardiovascular system from something like bacteremia, then what ends up happening is that all the blood volume, all the proteins, and all the cells just end up getting dumped into the all tissues, and they basically extravasate, or they leave the vascular compartment. And this is actually the picture of sepsis. And what happens is the person becomes hypo, hypotensive, they go into shock, and then they die. So endotoxin is something that's very, very serious. It does cause gram-negative sepsis and kill people. And when we think about endotoxin, which is on the anterior of the cell, right? That's the endo, it's part of the cell. The opposite is exotoxin. So it's exocytosed. It's pushed out of the cell and pumped. You know, it's no longer part of the bacteria anymore. So we're not just talking about gram negatives versus gram positives with exotoxin. A lot of different bugs have exotoxins. They're also heat labile, which means that if you boil it, you can, you know, denature the protein so that it's not virulent anymore. And there's one exception to that, which is Staph aureus produces enterotoxin, which causes food poisoning. That one is heat stable, but the other ones are all heat labile. And by the way, exotoxins are antigenic, which means that you can make a vaccine against it. For example, tetanus toxoid is a vaccine against tetanus toxin. And LPS, by the way, the endotoxin is not antigenic. So you will not be able to vaccinate somebody against LPS. So let's talk about a couple different kinds of virulence factors in the exotoxins. Now we can't go through them all because there's just a lot of them and it will take too long to go through them all. But the big ones we can think about are superantigen and then something that, on the other hand, a different type of toxin that can cause a change in the internal machinery of the cell. So what do we mean by that? A superantigen is something that causes an uncoordinated response to the immune system as opposed to a coordinated response to the immune system. So again, you know that B cells and T cells, they recognize very particular types of antigens only when presented in a very particular way. And, you know, this sort of very, very careful lock and key kind of picture causes the unlocking of the B cell or the T cell, which causes a huge response. Well, what happens if there's an antigen that can just non-selectively activate everything. Well, you know, maybe that doesn't sound like such a bad thing, but then when you think about all the B cells and T cells, they release all these cytokines, and they do things that we kind of already described in the picture of endotoxin sepsis. So the superantigen is going to cause this widespread cytokine storm and can cause a very similar picture, and that's very, very devastating. So that, that would be a bad thing. And examples of this would be toxic shock syndrome from Staph aureus and the strep pyogenes toxic shock-like syndrome, which we already mentioned is encoded by a lysogenic phage. So other bugs that can mess with the interior workings of the cell, we can talk about ADP ribosylation of proteins, which basically just you know alters the mechanics of a protein and therefore it can inactivate something important. For example, diphtheria inactivates elongation factor 2 by ADP ribosylation, so we can no longer make new proteins. 
And we can also have cyclic AMP induction. So, you know, cyclic AMP is important for second messenger cascade in a lot of different processes in the cell. So if you can induce that, you can mess with the cell's ability to regulate its own functions. So, for example, cholera induces cyclic AMP, which causes chloride exocytosis into the gut lumen, and then it flushes basically osmotically the bowel contents. But if you do this in a very unregulated way, you get massive diarrhea, dehydration, and death. Of note, by the way, anthrax also has got a CAMP. It's literally an adenylyl cyclase. So it packages its own enzyme, whereas the other toxins kind of just use the host adenylyl cyclase. So that's an important thing to know. So that's it for now, and we will continue with the next lecture where we talk about infectious diseases.